What's up, Makeup Minions? I'm Kim Witty from Witty Artistry, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, I'd really appreciate it if you hit that subscribe button below and the bell next to it so you don't miss any new videos. I am going to teach you guys how to make a really cool illusion to make it look like this rose is burrowing under your skin, but in like a pretty kind of way. Let's begin. If you like me and you like my videos, it would mean the world to me if you became a sponsor on my Patreon page. Starting out this makeup, I am going to be using Mayron, and it is in red. Follow a picture of a rose for this entire paint. It'll, it'll help immensely, because roses are kind of complicated. So I drew some shapes in red, and then I'm going to be using pink to just ever so slightly layer on top of the red petals I already laid down. My plan is just to build up pink over and over and over again on top of the red in the shapes of the petals where the petals are catching the most light. And eventually, as I continue to do this, it'll just magically over time look really three-dimensional because I've layered a bunch of, you know, different colors and brightnesses of the color. Typically with roses, the part that is the brightest is the ends of the petals just because they're stretched up towards the sun and roses typically have a little point at the end of some of their petals, especially in the center where it's all smooshed together. Then I am blending out the pink and then adding a little bit of dark red towards the center of the rose. This is just going to give it some more dimension and make it to look more three-dimensional. With a wet brush, I am just feathering the colors together even more. This is something I love about using aqua paint because you just you get your brush a little bit wet and then you can just blend everything together. It comes super soft. And then I can add more stark highlights and blend it in again. So now I am using white on top of the rose petals in the same place as I was before, but now it's going to be more intense and we already have that mid-tone and all the nice buildup beneath it already established. So this makeup was actually a suggestion from one of my awesome patrons, Dantastic. So thank you so much for that. This was really, really fun. Uh, I wanted it to be a red rose, but it actually ended up being pink, but I'm okay with this because I just thought it was really pretty and I just kept rolling with it. But I'm just adding more and more white, adding more and more layers, and then using a wet brush to just feather the white slowly towards the center of the rose. Really sorry, but my camera actually turned off in the middle of filming this part, but I took black and just ever so slightly put it near the most center points of the petals and then used a wet brush to feather it out. This created the deep, dark crevices that the complex, the complexity of all of the petals folded together creates. Now I'm using red to just go over the petals again because it was getting a little too purpley and I wanted to keep it in the pinky red hues. So that's just what I'm doing. This entire time I'm using a detailed brush. I just get mine from Michaels, but I know makeup companies sell them. I've heard good things about Morphe. Um, I know there's some SFX ones, but honestly, the ones I get from Michaels work just fine and they're pretty cheap, so I'm okay with this. I have gotten really attached to Mayron's uh, Cream White. It is a cream makeup and I love using it on top of like a finished body paint just to get really stark highlights that I can feather out super nice. It is a cream makeup that I'm putting on the tops of all of the petals again, but this stays a lot more strong and vibrant than the um, white body paint. And it is way easier to blue to, oh my gosh, to bleed out, no thank you, uh, to blend out just with the brush because it's so smooth. And uh, Mehron's like cream makeup is super, super buttery for lack of a better word. But I'm just doing that and I'm really tightening up the details in the center of the rose because there's so many petals that are just congregated together in a tight little ball. I have really been enjoying doing these arm illusions and really practicing my three-dimensional techniques with like drop shadows and really trying to trick the eye. Um, I definitely would do some more if you guys have any ideas or suggestions for another arm illusion or something that looks like it's popping out of your skin, but like without being gory. I want to keep it like, like a trick 3D illusion kind of thing. Please let me know in the comments and I would definitely like to try some. Um, I have an idea for like a cool candle, like my hand's a candle. It, it's, it's a vague concept right now, but I'm like really excited about it. So I'm pretty sure I'm going to film that. And uh, still just layering highlights. Literally this is a layering game, especially when it's something that's monochromatic like the roses. But 
you'll know when it's done. <laughs> It'll start looking really three-dimensional and incredibly detailed. But make sure you don't give up until you get to that point, as otherwise it won't uh, it won't sell the illusion and it won't look as like velvety soft and as supple as a rose does. Then very, very carefully, I am using a muted dark red to just re-accentuate all of those shadows. This time I am keeping it only close to the edges of the petals that are closest to the center without doing a super amount of blending because there's like a really intense shadow that the petal above would cast on the petal below. This makeup is a detail lover's dream. I was having so much fun mixing the colors and then being really, really meticulous with that tiny, tiny little brush. A luxury that I don't get to have on like a full body paint just because there's so, you only have so much time you can be in paint, you know? And something this small in your hand, you can really overkill the detail. Like right now I'm adding texture to the petals just with like little hash marks. And now I'm outlining the edges of the outer petals just to make them more separated from my hand. And finally, on to green body paint. I'm using Snazaroo and wolf for this and I am creating the little jagged I, I guess they're leaves at the base of the rose it's not on the stem where the leaves are but those like little crispy bits that come off of the flower so I'm adding those and then highlighting them with just a slightly lighter color and then I mixed a tint of red into the green to mute it this is a, a pretty common painting technique just to create the veins in the center now a super, super fun idea. I wanted to incorporate um, the stem in some fashion that created a more three-dimensional illusion. So I thought it would be super neat to have it snake above and below my skin, sort of like a sea serpent, uh, where you can like vaguely see the parts underwater, except under my skin in this case. So I created an arch out of green and then uh, I used a muted green, a darker green, near the ends of, I'm gonna call them macaroni noodles, <laughs> the edges of the little noodles of stem, where it's going to be burrowing into my skin. And then the end of the stem, I just want it to be a short little tail that sticks up so I can have like a super intense drop shadow. On to the highlights. So roses do have little thorns, so I added a few of those. And then I am just gradually adding more and more white to the mixture onto the leaves. I really wanted them to pop more. And I'm also adding more white onto the stems and the thorns just to really build up their three-dimensionalness. but I am now adding starker white highlights to the tips of the thorns because the, you know how like a rose is sort of waxy looking? It's like reflective, it's more thick and reflects lots of light. I wanted to capture that by keeping the highlights on the actual stem a little more stark, less blended. And now I'm using my Wolf Skins palette, which is like one of my favorite palettes for skin tones other than Mehron's cream one. But I am taking the mid-tone from this palette and I'm just sort of outlining the areas that the stem is underneath my skin. I was a little confused at this part on how to make it look like the stem is present, but isn't, isn't like too noticeable because I wanted it to still be under the skin. Uh, so I am blending out the edges of these skin noodles and I decided to almost wipe out the center of that little noodle I've created and just make it really subtle. Then I'm creating a, like a lip on the top of the skin where the stem burrows into the skin because I thought like if it was possible for the stem to have a mind of its own and like weave through your arm, it would create like a little pucker. Okay, now it is time for the drop shadow, which is when the illusion really pops. I am using BH Cosmetics 120 color eyeshadow palette for the gray. And I'm just creating a very low angled arch underneath the stem and feathering it out with a feathered brush. All you gotta do is make sure your shadows are more intense, closer to the object, and they fade as they go out. 
And I'm also adding a little bit of a drop shadow underneath the rose leaves and the edges of the petals. As one of the final little details, I am taking black body paint and very, very, very carefully outlining just the edges of the petals. I really wanted to sell that they have intense shadows that they're casting. And you are all done. I love it, I love it, I love it. What do you guys think? Look at how pretty it is, ah! Spring, spring, come on, spring. I'm so excited for spring and summer. It has been unusually cold here. So if you have sun, send it my way. Well, thanks for sticking to the end, guys. I, I'm, I really like this. It turned out more pink than I originally anticipated, but that's okay, because it's a rose that can be whatever color it wants. Uh, if you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and let me know what you thought about this in the comments below. But huge thank you to my wonderful Patreon producers. <laughs> without you guys. I could not fund the stuff like this, so thank you very much for funding me. And for all of you guys, if you're interested in joining Patreon, the link is up in the corner. That corner, I think. And uh, I will see you in the next video.